hey guys welcome back to another video welcome if you're new don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and let's get right into today's video you guys have no idea how close i was to actually putting the voiceover off another day but i just really need some content up right now filling the gaps and i think i left you guys waiting a little bit too long anyway so let's just go ahead and get this done um, I am starting this video off with a quick unboxing of a new desk light that I just purchased from Amazon. It will be linked down below in my Amazon storefront if you guys want to check it out. If you end up liking it after I unbox it and show it, you can go there and check it out for yourself. So this is a half moon light. And I've been seeing a lot of people use and start to unbox these for content a couple months back. And I really wanted to try one. But I didn't go through with the purchase because all the ones I've seen are pretty pricey. Like they're um, over like $50, $60, $70. So I was just like, I will wait for now because I do get a lot of compliments on my lighting a lot. So I was just like, it's not really needed. So I'll wait. Um, but I finally gave in a couple days, well weeks ago, and I finally purchased one from Amazon. Um, again, this is a half moonlight, and these are supposed to be very good for content because it has like the lighting that goes all the way around. And from the angle that you record, the lighting will be hitting like the viewpoint at all angles. So it's perfect for if you don't have like a lot of studio lights or a lot of fancy overhead lights, this will be great. Um, and as you see, I'm just putting it together, the little side bar feet thingies were really easy to just slide in. It's not really much assembling that you guys need to do. It also comes with this little phone clamp. However, I didn't really like that as much because how the phone clamps in, I do like to look at my phone screen while I'm recording to make sure everything is nice and framed, make sure it's not blurry. Um, I like to pause and like start recording again a lot so I didn't really like how hidden the phone screen was and um, I didn't end up using it to record I just used the one that I already have clamped to my desk um, I did just kind of put it right where the clamp would go it was like right in the center it was perfectly there so I didn't have any problems with it also um, as you guys just saw it kind of went by fast but it also has two different settings where you can use like the more orange light or you can just go bright white and also has another knob for the um the brightness you can dim it and also it goes super bright and this here is just with this um half moon light this is the only light i use for like the little testing part and i think it is pretty bright for what it is i do like it and also it has like little rhinestones on like the top of it so it's super cute and also the listing i purchased mine from it also comes in pink with the rhinestones i was so close to getting the pink but i just decided on white because it just felt the most cleanest and yeah i just got white but they do have options for pink as well if that's what you want if you do decide to get this lamp but for the most part this is my first time using it and i do think it is a pretty bright light but now for the recording part i am also using my overhead light just because that's just what i'm used to you know i just really want that really bright light so i am only using two lights which is the new half moon light and my overhead um, a ring light which is also linked in my amazon storefront if you guys want to go check that out as well um i do get a lot of compliments on my lighting so i'm always just like it's a big thing for me especially when trying to create content so yeah i was just really trying to make it where i like it and i just love it so um yeah like i said it will be linked down below but for today's video i am going to be doing some long pink cutesy clown nails i did get a comment on one of my other videos saying that they would love to see some clown nails and i've had clown nails on my list for halloween anyway so i did want to do some clown nails but in my vision i was gonna do like some really like killer clown or like scary clown type of vibe but i saw this um nails design on pinterest and i really liked it it was super cute and the time i recorded this video i was already running late on like halloween designs anyway so i just decided to make today's video a recreation and i just really love everything from start to finish this design is gonna be the cutest ever i really enjoyed it it was super fun even now i can't even believe i made it turn out so good like it was just super neat i can't wait for you guys to see it at the end but um as you guys just saw i did already apply my nail tips i filed over the surface shine 
Just to remove the shine from the nail tips, I did apply my UV gloves because I am doing some poly gel nails today and I will be in and out the light. So just to protect my skin, I did go ahead and do that before I start my application. Um, and also you just saw I did apply a little bit of base coat over my natural nails, over my nail bed area, and just a little bit down where I applied the nail tip. And that's because I do have a peel off base underneath this. So whenever I go to file, it just kind of gives it a little bit of strength so it doesn't pop off as easily. Um, and I didn't have any problems with popping off while I was filing, so that was great. But um, like I said, I am going to be doing some poly gel nails. As you guys already see, I'm starting to apply. Um, I am going to be using some poly gel from a car, and this is called um, Le Crepe. I think that's how you pronounce it. But it's just a really clean pinkish. Almost, it kind of gives like cover pink, but it also gives like sheerness. And I thought it would be a great base for this. One thing I noticed, I think I mentioned this the last time I used this poly gel as well, is that since it is on the more transparent side, this poly gel will be a little bit stickier than most poly gels because it has a lot more clear in it. And the nature of clear poly gel is just sticky anyway so you know you can't really get away from it so it did take a little bit more padding and smoothing it out to get it to where i wanted it to be throughout the entire process i am making sure i'm not adding too much pressure because like i said since this is a little bit more of a stickier poly gel if i add too much pressure it's just going to be a lot more to work with so i am trying to make sure i keep um, minimum pressure while, while also just trying to push it where I need it to be gently with smoothing it out as well and like always I am using 91% ice purple alcohol as my slip solution it works the best for me um, and as you guys just saw after I was done smoothing out my first layer I did go ahead and cure that for 30 seconds I do get a lot of comments saying poly gel should be cured for 60 seconds and I do agree, but I'm only doing mines for content and I never have problems with curing mines for 30 seconds, no matter how thick I have it, how much poly gel I add. Even though that is something you should be looking out for, since mine is only for content, I don't wear these for more than three days, if I'm honest. If I like them even, like if I like them, I might wear them for like three days. But for the most part, after I take pictures, like an hour later, they're off my fingers, so I don't have to worry about if there's like still poly gel still uncured even though that is totally not the case on any of the poly gel nails i've done but if you are planning to wear them for as long as you want to make sure that you do cure them for 60 seconds um i know that is like a little bit like hypocritical i don't know if that's the right word but um if you guys get what i'm saying then you get it but yeah i do cure mine for 30 i don't have any problems with it but yeah, anyways, after that part is cured, I do add another bead up at my cuticle area and that's going to be my apex. For that bead, I do leave most of that poly gel up there in the area. I do like to work at an angle when getting around my cuticle areas so that the poly gel is nice and snug. It's not getting on my skin, but it also leaves like that perfect hump that leaves into my apex. And I think all of my apexes on these nails were really great. Um, I didn't have to do more than two beads for each nail, so that was awesome. Um, it did save me a lot of time only doing two beads. I felt like the thickness of these nails were also great. So I just had a good poly gel day. I had a good nail art day as well. I think when I have videos like this that goes like really great for me, like where I love the prepping, the application, the nail art is great. I love the outcome of how the nails look. It just makes me so excited to pose because I know you guys would like them too. But now I'm on my second nail and you guys saw how I just basically did the same process where I did my first bead um, only on the nail tip. I went ahead and cured that and now I'm working on my second bead which is going to be my apex area. Like I said I do get around my cuticle area make sure it's not on my skin. And I don't try to work the rest of that poly gel down because I want most of this poly gel to be up at my apex area. So it has like that hump and that thickness. So for the rest of it, once I situate my apex, the rest of the poly gel, I just kind of blend down into the rest of the nail. Not necessarily caring if it goes like all the way to the tip because that's not what I want. Basically at that point, I just want the rest of the nail to be as even as possible. Um, Even though I will go and file these nails and make sure that they are you know even i just try to make sure that the poly gel is as even as i can get it because it does saves a lot of time when 
I get to the filing and that's pretty much how my application goes for the rest of this process. Um, like I always explain the process of how I actually apply it, I do go ahead and put a line going down the center of the nail, dipping my brush into my alcohol solution. I do go ahead and pat it using like the flat part of my brush. I just pat it down the entire nail, making sure to pat it over to the sides. And once I get it over the entire part where I want it, that's when I dip my brush back into my slip solution and start to smooth it out. Um, and just making sure to look at it from all angles, make sure each part has um, a decent amount of poly gel because if one side has more, it's just going to be uneven once you go to smooth it out. So always make sure that you are um, putting at least around the same amount on each side of the nail. That's also going to make smoothing it out a lot easier. And once I get it smoothed out, I cure it and then go on to the next bead and so forth until I have all of my application done. I am showing the last two nails I think a little bit faster so it doesn't take super long um, and I'll just let you guys go ahead and watch this part play out. I think my application was really nice so I think you guys will enjoy it as well but once I finish we will be getting into the nail art. So this is how my application looks once I finish doing all of my nails. I did my thumb off camera because um, I think four nails is enough to see how, you know, get a good glance of how the application went. Like I said, I really like it. I did leave my filing, shaping and filing buffing off camera, but once I come back to wipe the nails down and this is how they look, I did make sure to cleanse underneath the nails as well. Um, just using some alcohol and my little scrub brush just to make sure there's no dust so when I go to um, do my nail art it's not like really bumpy or I don't have anything underneath it. And with the filing I did try to do like the little half moon tips. If you guys know what I'm talking about it is so difficult to try to even do that. I see tutorials of people filing their tips like that all the time with a nail drill and it just looks so easy so when I try to do it that way it's just so hard to do. And I really have to be careful because if I file the tip too much, it's just going to make that one nail shorter. And if that nail end up being shorter than the rest of them, it's just going to be like I have to go and file all the other ones to that length as well. And then also try to redo the moon shape on all of them. So it's just a really complicated process. So I did what I could and I think I like how it turned out. You can kind of see like the moon shape at some angles, but... Um, for the most part, I just do like that they all look pretty uniform. Um, but now getting into the nail art, 
I did have two gel polishes from Nail Reserve. I mixed those together on my nail palette because I really wanted that like combination. Also, like I mentioned, this is a recreation set. So I wanted this to look as much like the original as possible because I just really liked it. Um, and these gel polishes were actually perfect. But for the first layer, when I tried to apply it, it just looked really bumpy. And I was just so confused because I did make sure that I wiped all of the dust away. I make sure that I cleanse my nails. So I was so unsure where like the little bumpiness was coming from. So as you guys saw, I did go ahead and apply some matted top coat just to kind of give like the surface a little bit of a cleaner look a little bit. Just make it a little bit more smoother because I thought maybe it was just like the surface of the nail. I'm not sure. But that didn't work either when I tried to reapply it. So in the end, I just ended up going with that one gel that was like given that mixture like a really pearlescent look. And this gel polish is called Playground from Nail Reserve. I will have all of the gels I used listed down below so that if you want to check them out, you can. I do have a discount code for Nail Reserve as well. So if you want any of these polishes, definitely make sure to check them out. The quality is amazing. Um, but yeah, I just end up going with one coat of that shimmery. I love how it gives like that chrome powder look. Like, you know, the shimmery chrome um, glaze donut type of look. This is the perfect gel polish to mimic that because I know sometimes, well, a lot of times chrome powder can be messy, especially like getting it everywhere. It's just a great alternative if you want that look. But once I got that applied, I did go ahead and cure that for 30 seconds. And now I'm taking more of these gel polishes. I do have some from Nail Reserve. I do have some from Madame Glam. And I do try to show them so that you guys can see which ones I'm using. Before some of these colors, I did go ahead and put just a tiny bead on my nail palette. These are the colors I'm going to be using to do the 3D balloons with. Um, and I think this part turned out so good as well. So for like the mixture I'm going to mix with it, I'm only going to need a little bit of gel polish. Try not to waste them. So I'm just putting a little bit on my nail palette and I was so happy that I actually had colors to kind of match the original design. I know sometimes when you are doing like recreation sets, either you try to like make it a little different to make it yours or you just try to get it close as the original as possible. And I think for me, this design was definitely trying to make it just like the original because I thought it was just so cute. I wanted it to look exactly like it. Then also I'm pulling out this milky white builder gel that I got from Timu. Um, the first time I ever used this, I did use it to do those like 3D um, nail. I forgot what it's called, but it's like the 3D puffy nails. It was so fun to use and I actually really, really, really like this product. Um, I think it's like the perfect consistency and then this jar is a lot. So it'll probably last me for as long as I am creating videos on YouTube whenever I go and need this but i'm just using a dotting tool to just twirl some onto it and mix a little bit into each and every color i place down um and what made this even great is that since the builder gel is milky white um i didn't want the colors to be like super vibrant i kind of like that it is like muted out it kind of gives like a pastel vibe whenever i go to mix the milky white into these colors it lightens it up a little bit so i think that was also very great i didn't have to add any white to it to get them where i want it it was literally perfect um and once i finish setting all of these up i am gonna start to apply the little droplets for the balloons i started on this nail because i thought it was gonna be the hardest and it ended up being a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Um, for the last one, I did put down a little bit of builder gel and I mixed a little bit of white to it off camera um, just because I forgot that I was going to need it. So once I got all of my colors set, I am going to be using a nail art brush just to pick up a little bit and just kind of twirl it in a circle to make like that perfect bead. And once I get it down, I go ahead and use my knot polish um flashing light just to kind of keep it in place until i'm done then of course once i finish all of them i will put them into my bigger light when doing this it was a little bit soft so i wasn't able to get the beads exactly the shape i wanted without them kind of overlapping because since this is like a self-leveling product whenever i place down like a second bead if there is some like next to it it just kind of starts to bleed into it a little bit so i did have to work rather quickly so that it doesn't overlap too much and make it a lot harder for me to try to do 
but for the most part you can definitely tell what this is and i think it turned out really good once i placed all of my balloons down and got them cured for the most part i did work on them a little bit more off camera just to kind of make the shapes a little bit better because as you guys can see like that pink one was definitely not given a balloon so i did work a little bit with them off camera just to kind of make the shapes a little bit better and just to make the 3d pop a little bit more because they were kind of flat since i have to work a little bit faster but yeah i think this also turned out really great as well Now I'm going to use that white, the last little section where I added white into the Milky White Builder Gel. I'm just going to make the strings and this part was rather easy. Um, it was kind of difficult on where I should place the lines without them overlapping too much. So I did just kind of do them as random as possible and again I think this part was good as well. So this nail is done. Now I'm going to move on to my next nail and these are going to be my clown faces. And of course it's going to be sort of like that laugh now and cry later type of vibe because one of them will be happy and the other one will be crying. Um, and for the base of these I wanted a really nice and pink base. So I'm going in with this color here called sprinkles and this gel polish is from McCart. And I'm just going to do two layers on my ring finger and my index nail. Um, the first layer I wasn't really gonna go in with two layers but for the first layer like up at my cuticle area it wasn't as like smooth and opaque as i wanted it wanted it to be so once i got my first layer cured i did go over it with another coat and you will kind of see it like throughout also one thing i did want to point out is that when using this new light um and how i have my phone sitting since it is like such a huge bar light right above my phone camera there was like a really huge light glare going straight through my phone so i couldn't really tell if i was in frame or not whenever i did look up at my phone screen it was kind of hard to see so for some of it i will be a little bit too close and you'll see like i'm starting to go um, a little bit out of frame towards the bottom and I do apologize for that like I said this is my first time using this new light so I will be making some adjustments after seeing how the recording went for this so please just bear with me but for the most part you can still see what's happening I did just want to point that out if you have been noticing that throughout the video Um, but after doing my two coats, I am going to be taking this blackest black liner gel from Nails by Deb. And then I'm going to start to create the twinkly stars for the clown's eyes. And this part was super easy to do. It's just like any other twinkle star. But for the eyes, it's not just going to be the regular four pointed stars. It is going to be like eight points. But I do start off by doing the four pointed stars. And then in between those four, I do like smaller ones. And the key to this is to make it as neat as possible. You don't need a lot of um, polish on the brush. 
Um, I think one thing that also makes this easier is that I am using the gel paint, which makes line art super easy. Also, I am using a new brush from Nails by Dev. I even forgot I ordered like extras, but I saw like it still had like the little clear cap on it. I was like, yes, I'm definitely going to need this if I want this nail art to come out super neat. So I am using a brand new brush. This is, I believe, like one of her detailer brushes. Probably not, but I will have it linked down below. Um, I think this brush made it so much easier for the nail art. Also for the eyes, it does help if you don't keep dipping back into the polish. Just work from the dot that you place. That should be enough to um, create the little points without making them too huge or too thick. And I am caring after each thing I do just because I don't want to mess this up. It's going so great. The next thing I'm doing are the eyebrows and the eyebrows are like super exaggerated and super thin. They're just like upside down used and I can't believe I did those in like one try. Um, For the nose, I did just use that nail art brush and that mixture that I placed from doing the balloons and placed one little dot right in the center of my nail. I think this size was pretty good so I did go ahead and use my not polished light to give it a flash cure and then I'll be moving on to the mouth and now I'm gonna use the red gel polish without the um, builder gel mixed into it and just create the mouth starting off with the two dots I think the main thing was just trying to make them even like trying to make them symmetrical I think for the mouth the left one was a little bit um, lower than the right dot but that's okay because once I added like the full mouth part you couldn't really tell um and again the mouth is super exaggerated it's like super long so once i get the shape to my liking i am going to go ahead and fill that in i'm also going to be going in with a little bit of black on top of this but i am going to cure the red first and i'll just let the rest of this play out for the next one i am going to repeat that same process over on my ring finger but this one is going to be the sad clown so the mouth of course is going to be different and the eyebrows and then of course i will be creating some 3d teardrops so i'll just go ahead and let you guys watch this part play out um i do want to thank you if you are still watching up to here um let me know if you are enjoying today's video so far by leaving a like subscribe if you haven't already or just leave a simple comment down below whatever you decide to do i will be super appreciative anything that you do interact with my channel it goes towards helping it out to grow so whatever you decide to do i am super grateful and i'll be back once i'm done with both of my clown nails and we can get into the next design
for the tears i was so upset that i didn't get these on camera because i felt like these tears were so perfect like the little droplets were the perfect size um for the right one you can kind of see it it's a little bit out of frame i did go back into frame to cure it um and then for this one you can kind of see it a little bit better but um, like I said, I will make some adjustments to um, how my camera is, make sure I'm in frame the next time because like I said, I couldn't really see from the glare being on my screen, but yeah, I was just so upset that some of it wasn't really in frame. Um, and that's pretty much it for my next clown nail. Um, I went ahead and cured the entire nail for 30 seconds in my light. Now I'm just going to make some yellow gel polish and some white just to create a lighter pastel yellow. Um, and now I'm going to move to my pinky nail and do a French tip. And I really like this nail because, um, the first, like when I first was trying to figure out what I was going to do, I kind of wanted to like try to make it my own. But like I said, I liked it so much to where I just end up recreating it as what it was. And I really like this nail because I was going to change it and try to do like some popcorn because I think this nail definitely reminded me of like a bucket of popcorn and now like looking at it I think this was kind of what it was based around or like what it was trying to implement. I don't know the correct word but this yellow definitely reminded me of like popcorn. So I was thinking about trying to make like some 3D popcorn using some of my um, solid gel or something but I just thought that was gonna take too long. I didn't know if I could pull it off so again I just end up doing what the design was like. Um, but yeah I'm doing some French tips on these. Once I get this French tip cured I'm gonna take some blue and red gel polish and create some stripes going down. I'm gonna have one blue line going down the center and then two red ones on the outside of this one. My thumb is going to be the same way, but since I did have more space, I did add some pink lines on the side of my red lines just to kind of fill it in and give it a little bit more color. Um, and then also I'm going to apply some top coat once I'm done with the lines because I did have to put some pearls going down the center of the blue line and it just made it easier to cure them into the top coat. So for these, once I finish all my lines and get them cured, I am going to be adding some top coat and just going ahead and curing those in there. Um, and then once I finish adding my pearls, I think that's going to be it for the design. I think all that's left to do is just do my top coat and I'll just go ahead and let that play out. And once I finish getting everything top coated, I'll be back to let you guys see how the finish set looks and I cannot wait.
as always at the end of the video we have to add some cuticle oil to re-nourish my cuticles once i rub that in this is how the finished set looks and i am so happy at how these turned out i think this is one of the best halloween designs that i've done it's not necessarily a halloween thing but i did do it for a halloween set and i think it just looks so good um, initially I thought the 3D part, especially the balloons, would be so hard to do, but it ended up being super easy. I just love the cutesy clown look to it. I love the pink and the different colors. It kind of gives like pastel in a way. It just looks really cute and I was just so surprised at how great my nail art turned out. Like I said, this was just really like, I just love everything about it. Um, I will try to leave everything I used down below, the poly gel, the gel polishes, everything that you saw in today's video. So make sure to check that out along with my discount code section so that you can see all of my discount codes for all of the brands. Let me know what you thought about today's set and as always don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!